Tony Cheng joins me now on the line live from uh, Palu. Tony, uh, the Red Cross has reported entire villages being wiped off the map. Uh, that includes Potobo. You were in Potobo just yesterday. What, uh, what did you find there? Well, well, nothing. And, and as the Red Cross say, it has been literally wiped off. And there is a the village somewhere there, but now on top of it is five metres of mud that uh, residents who survived literally told us came bubbling out of the earth like lava from a volcano. Uh, and it appears to have swallowed up the whole place. And that's making the work of the search and rescue teams incredibly difficult because uh, not only is, are they dealing with the rubble of what was, you know, a fairly large community, uh, as many as a thousand, one of the rescue workers told me, uh, but that mud has also now set like concrete and, and baked in the sun over the last seven days. Miraculously, though, when we were there, they told us they had heard some sounds uh, coming in reaction to calls they were making. Up, making. So they, they hadn't given up hope of finding survivors, and they were still holding back the heavy machinery in the hope that they could find some survivors. Uh, but we also spoke to one mother in particular. Her daughter, Nina, was a 19-year-old law student who lived in the village because she wanted to save a bit of money. Uh, she had driven all the way from her home, 700 kilometers away on a motorbike, uh, just to find her daughter. But she realizes now that the chances of finding her daughter alive are very slim. She said she just wanted to see her one more time. Uh, and if we look sort of more broadly, what challenges are the government and aid agencies uh, facing now in getting supplies uh, to survivors? Well, this is the problem. The problem is not very much for those who survived these, these double disasters. Um, and they're now being left with, with a city that is running on nothing. There's no electricity, there's very little access to communication, no cell service. Uh, but basic necessities are also running out. All of the shops uh, are empty. Many have been looted. Um, and very little is coming in. The two main roads into the city are blocked with 24-hour delays as people try to get out. Uh, by air, they're bringing in some supplies, but it's really not a viable option. We've just been to the port in the west of Palu where they're shipping in supplies, and a fair amount is coming in. Uh, but it's just not enough. This was a city of 370,000 people, and uh, many of them are deciding that life here is just not tenable for the moment, and they're doing their best to get out. The problem is that's bringing, blocking pastures that are, that are available to the government to bring help in. Uh, and Tony, you're, you're right now standing, if I'm not uh, mistaken, you're standing on the beach where the tsunami hit on Friday. Uh, can you just describe for us what you see around you, what state that beach is in now? Well, there is uh, well, there's a shipping freighter that's been washed in about 50 metres onto the shore. And little else is standing. I can see in the distance one large warehouse structure. But I'm actually standing in the wreckage of a home. Even the concrete walls have been knocked down by the force of the wave. And you can also smell here that there is the evidence of dead, dead bodies. There are clearly dead bodies around here. Uh, we've seen some of the fishing rescue teams uh, operating a little further down the coast, but this is a long stretch of coastline and the tsunami hit it very hard. It's going to take them a very long time until they can get through all of this massive mudding.